So hi, so uh, we are going for the coffee break and uh, I try to wake you up uh, somehow. Um, blockchain meets backend as a service. Uh, first, I'm not a blockchain expert. I'm coming from the backend as a service space. Uh, and yeah, as you see there, Apio Mart is one of, uh, one of those backend as a service companies. And I just want to ask you some questions. Please stand up. Who has heard anybody about backend as a service? <laughs> okay, please stand up. Who has never heard about backend as a service? You need to stand up now. Yeah, okay, perfect. You are not sleeping at all. Perfect, that is good. Uh, who has heard something about blockchain? I stand up again. Okay, perfectly. No, no uh, please stand up. Um, who can explain blockchain that uh, keeps standing up and the rest sit down? Okay, we will ask both of you uh, later on because I'm not the expert, hopefully you are. <laughs> okay, um, wh what I'm trying to explain to you is uh, firstly uh, giving you an idea what blockchain could be useful to. Uh, I have got one use case just to give you an idea, then I'll explain a little bit about blockchain with my not expert view. Uh, I'll explain backend as a service, and I would say uh, I'm an expert in that because uh, yeah, we have founded a backend, backend as a service company. I'm one of the founders, um, and we're doing this since 2012. And then um, I'm telling you about how those things may work together. So this is the use case, uh, supply chain, um, I'm normally on the right side, I'm a customer, and I want to buy uh, a meat. I'm from Germany, Syringia, and, and uh, we have very good barbecues there, uh, very good sausages. I want to have the best meat ever, and I want to know uh, what the pigs uh, were eating, uh, were they happy, uh, how were they looking. Uh, I, I would like to have all those informations. Uh, and um, so here is the complete supply chain beginning from the uh, supplier who uploads data on which photo is used, uh, the animals are RFID uh, tagged uh, in the ear probably, and, and uh, so they know how old they are, uh, what the weight is, and how they develop. Uh, the producer gets information uh, how I require the cuts. Do I want to have uh, small pieces or big pieces of meat uh, for my barbecue? Uh, the distributor um, gets notification uh, from things which are coming together and uh, who is get, uh, getting to have what, what in the store. He's calling a third party logistic who hopefully has a good fridge uh, on their uh, run to keep everything cold all the time. I would like to know that in the end, that it wasn't warm. Um, and at the end, uh, it, it'll be in the store. I, they, they can give me a, an app where I, ca I can scan the meat, and I get an idea whether, uh, whether everything went right with that. So that, that is the idea of the supply chain use case. And just have a look how it, how it could look like. Uh, the sublayer could have uh, um, an app where he has uh, yeah, the list of pigs. They don't have names, as I would expect it. They just have numbers, uh, the chickens and cows, whatever, and how much they uh, they, uh, the weight is and how old they are, and uh, probably there are details about the fodder and so on. Um, the distributor, oh, you don't see anything, but uh, yeah, he gets all the information which is coming in, well, which uh, meat is getting out, um, there, and, and which are the log logistic firms, uh, what are they doing, uh, and me as the customer, yeah, there is my pork fillet, and I can see, okay, it was at the supplier, six months, then 23 hours at the producer. Uh, hopefully I don't see pictures how it was uh, at the butcher, uh, then at the distributor and how long it was in the store. So, so uh, I would like to have that application to see all of that. But um, those are all different companies. So how is that working actually? They all have paper-based processes in the end. If it's getting from one company to the next company, they, they have a paper where, where it's written down, okay, we have those pigs uh, with that rates and so on, give that over and the next guy will take it and put it into their IT system. And that is where blockchain comes into the game. I will try to explain it very simple. 
So uh, blockchain is uh, often called a distributed ledger technology. What is a ledger? So uh, as uh, as the, the guy who uh, has the pigs, uh, I would could uh, put in uh, in a book. Okay, a new pig. Uh, uh, was born and uh, now the weight is like this, now the weight is like this. I'm just adding data every day. I'm just adding data um, and I've written there post, read, update, delete. It reminds us a little bit as a, at a database table, but it isn't because normally I'm not updating rows and I'm not deleting rows in such a ledger. So normally I'm just adding information. And that's what's very important in the blockchain. You are not updating and you're not deleting things. You're just adding new information and you give the possibility to read that information. So that's the first thing you should remember. Just post and read and no update and delete. So next thing, it's not only a ledger, it should be a distributed ledger. So you not only have one of that books, if you're writing in one of that books, some, a new record, there is a new pig born, then with somehow crypto magic I've written here, it is written to some other nodes. And this could be the node of uh, the store, this could be the node of the distributor, and the node of the supplier. Everyone will have uh, a node, and if I'm writing on one of the ledgers, it is also directly written to the other nodes. And so, we are from computer science uh, created that thing, so that's not enough for us. Uh, next thing what we want to have is, so I, as a, if I if I'm, would own the store, I would only accept things uh, which were cool all the time. So if there was written in that ledger that uh, um, the fridge was uh, damaged and it was more than 10 degrees over the whole travel from Italy to Germany, then I would say don't accept this. But I would have to look into that ledger and would always have to look Oh, wh how, how many degrees it was all the time. They posted it properly. I have the possibility to read. They are not allowed to delete an update, but I would have to do that. And so we are from computer science. We said, okay, that there might be some logic also in there. And then that is called smart contract that you can also have the possibility to only allow new operations if something occurs. So if it was more than, uh, or if it was less than 10 degrees all the time, then I'm allowed to put it into my shelf. Yeah, that's it. Ledgers distributed to different nodes, some crypto magic behind to keep that all synchronized and the possibility to have smart contracts to fi define also logic. If you want to have a deeper dive, uh, the, um, I don't know that uh, there are some other presentations. Probably they are going deeper. Uh, if you want to read something, what the fuck is the blockchain? Uh, I think is a, is a good starting p uh, point. There's an article. If you Google it, you will find it. Uh, and it's a 20 minutes read, and uh, you will get also the information about what is a proof of work and a little bit an insight what the crypto magic uh, is about. What are the types of blockchain? There are public blockchains. Uh, one was already mentioned, uh, Bitcoin. Um, there are private blockchain companies can use that technology also um, just within one company as a private blockchain. And there are consortium blockchains. And I, I think this is, uh, yeah, for our use case, the interesting point. There's a consortium of uh, uh, different companies working together. And I think that is also uh, one big point where blockchain really adds value. It's not about only digitalization within one company. It's often if people who don't trust each other completely uh, can work together and can work digitally together. And then that could be with a consortium blockchain. Some well-known blockchains, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Corda, which is a little bit in the uh, direction of financial industry, Hyperledger from IBM, just to give you some names. Uh, but the field is really, uh, y you need to, uh, so we have one colleague uh, who's really looking very deep on it. Every night or every evening, he's uh, spending two hours just looking what is new in that field. And there's so much to read and, and the market is really evolving and 
Yeah, but those are well known and uh, yeah, used in some use cases. Okay, why blockchain? So I've made a little bit, so transparency, I as a customer will get the transparency, fewer intermediaries, so we don't need a central instance between um, all of those, uh, all of those companies working together, that there need to be someone central. And if you're sending guilt, uh, sending money, thinking about Bitcoin, you don't need the central instance of, uh, of a bank. So that could be something with fewer intermediaries. Uh, you, you can get into faster processes. If you think about not having the paper and putting from the paper to your ERP system, uh, whether you are the supplier, the distributor, or the store, um, that, that can completely be automated. Uh, there is security automation, quick return on investor possible. I don't want to dive too deep here. Too deep here. Um, but what I want to dive a little bit deeper is, if you want to use the blockchain, please ask some question. Blockchain is a little bit a buzzword, and a lot of projects is just digitalization projects, and not every digitalization project is a blockchain project. So. Um, you may ask, um, is the data dynamic with an auditable history? Need to, need, do I need to have it auditable? So if I'm making a database, which also are speaking here something. So yeah, I don't need an auditable history. It could just be a database. Uh, why, why I have a blockchain for that? I don't need a blockchain for everything. Uh, should or can the data be controlled by a central authority? If there is a central authority that can control the data, which is which is good for it, and, and you need that central authority um, in every case, then uh, they can also have a database. Why should they have a blockchain? And is the speed of transaction the most important consideration? So, yeah, you have seen that crypto magic and uh, with uh, those nodes, uh, putting the data between those nodes, making the crypto ma magic is not fast and not uh, cheap. So uh, if you want to do algorithmic trading and you uh, want to make a buy on Google if Microsoft and Apple uh, within the last two milliseconds evolved a little bit, uh, then blockchain might also not be the right technology for you. But there I've also linked uh, a good article uh, with that picture in there where you can uh, find some questions. Yeah, and the use cases. Supply chain, uh, we've talked a little about, uh, about that. Um, public sector, official registry of governments, um, and, and there are some countries uh, who are actually working and, and have implemented things. Uh, we are in Germany very slow with that. If I want to know uh, who owns the, um, uh, the ground of my neighbor, I would have to have a look in a paper-based register, and that like, will be a long process. Uh, they will let me uh, rate for one week. This could also be in a blockchain, central, something central, but could be, could be also central. Voting, back office functions in the public sector. Yeah, we have utilities here, peer-to-peer -peer solar energy sales. So actually, in solar, we have uh, that big companies who are uh, in the middle, who are the central authority, but they can also uh, say, okay, I'm, I'm just want to have a little bit money for using my net. And the, the real uh, sale between the solar power I get and my neighbor wants from me, that could be also uh, in the blockchain. So summary use cases. Uh, IoT is uh, something where blockchain comes into the game, business to customer, business to uh, employee, uh, streamline uh, HR processes in a company where no one has the possibility to update and delete something. So everything is just posted, could be interesting. Um, yeah, and there are complete ecosystems like you've heard about Bitcoin, uh, which, which are built on blockchain now. So that is everything about uh, blockchain. Now let's get to the second part you are all new in, which is backend as a service. Um, um, since I saw that, I, I had a look at uh, Wikipedia and put that out. So it's uh, a model for providing web and mobile developers with a way to link the application to backend cloud storage. I wouldn't completely agree to cloud. Uh, and APIs exposed by backend applications for also providing features such as user management, push notifications, 
integration with social networking serv uh, services, and these services are provided via the use of custom software development kits and APIs. It's relatively recent in development in cloud computing with most startups dating from 2011. So we founded the company in 2012. Uh, the industry trends, so it's, it's getting mainstream for application development. So if you in a company, whether it is smaller or it's bigger, and you know we are not having just one app, so we will have uh, 100 apps and websites and also Alexa skills and also chatbots and whatever. So there will be a lot of front ends. Uh, and we have those enterprise systems which don't have a connection to the internet. And you need something in the middle between those enterprise systems and this new cool stuff, uh, then backend as a service could be something for you. Just to give you an idea of the architecture that you might cannot read. Okay, <laughs> let me try to get over here. Um, to, there is something in the middle. Here are your enterprise system, could be your SAP or central identity management. There could be also cloud system like uh, push notifications, uh, artificial intelligence, or other local systems. And there are uh, the front end devices uh, over there, and there are those SDKs generated for the different front end uh, devices with uh, all the logic for uh, getting the data out of the API, uh, making offline handling, making push notification, location based services, all that stuff that you would have to develop in every application once and once again, which is not visible, that would be everything in that, in that SDKs. The API is generated, the SDKs is generated, and just what you're defining is the data which is used uh, in your application and business logic and security. And there's also a, a caching layer, which in our case is a MongoDB, um, where you can put in some uh, yeah, mocked sample data or in the beginning if you're doing rapid prototyping, which I would uh, completely recommend everywhere. And uh, later on, this uh, MongoDB or caching layer uh, is also used for um, um, caching data from the backend system, which are normally not that 24 seven available or not that fast as you want that in your applications. And there is also a complete analytics engine in there and there is a, a, a governance layer uh, for having monitoring, administrating, uh, which modules are available there um, um, for, for having yeah, a central array of developing applications in an enterprise. And there is also one more thing over there, uh, which is called this, a low-code front-end tool. In our case, it's up here at Studio, uh, where you can, yeah, in a, in a drag-and-drop way, create some applications for having very fast rapid prototypes that you can try out with your customers. So those apps uh, or websites that we have seen would be created within one day with, um, with that kind of tool to um, just interact with your customer. Is that what you want? And uh, make rapid prototyping with that. So who's using that? Uh, we have some examples here that uh, Schuler is a manufacturer who makes, uh, yeah, very big presses uh, for, for the car uh, industry, for making the door of your car from uh, slight uh, bare metal. Um, and they have yeah, something like a social network um, for the support of their machines. Uh, Union Investment is a bank with uh, a lot of internal process and Volkswagen you may know. And if you go to a German uh, car dealer and get a, uh, and get a new Golf, or something like that, and he's showing it with, your, uh, with the iPad, all the information, and making the protocol and all those things without paper, uh, then those people uh, are going over back end as a service. Yeah. Yeah. And just go through the features once again. Uh, the studio for rapid prototyping in a, yeah, I, I would say it's like something between PowerPoint and Photoshop, where you can click together things and a real app uh, comes out that you can run on your iOS or Android device, or a real website comes out that you can run on your browsers. Um, there is something for backend integration for developers that can use just Java code for integrate complex systems, and they can also use uh, predefined connectors for simple databases or SAP based on OData. Uh, for a standardized system, there are standardized connectors, but they can also build their own. Um, the front-end developers uh, use those SDKs I've mentioned. Um, yeah, you, you have uh, different stages. Uh, it can be deployed 
and, and that's, uh, it can be deployed on the cloud or even also on premise. Uh, since we are in Germany, uh, nearly all of our customers are actually not in the cloud. Uh, uh, most, mostly we are uh, on, uh, on premise uh, installed. And there is, uh, as, as I said, a lot of uh, IT operations stuff uh, where you can have um, governance, uh, audit logs, and see who has done uh, what. Here would be something, nothing should be uh, updated and deleted in that audit log. Could be something for a blockchain. Um, yeah, and, and for the business people, there is a lot of uh, measurement uh, possibilities. So if you're creating websites, apps, you need to know uh, how often this button was clicked. If the, in the next iteration I'm, I'm adding functionality to that feature, it only makes sense if people are using that feature. If not, I don't have to add functionality. So from the beginning, uh, have it thought about front-end analytics, and uh, yeah, here we, we have also included those tools for the business to do that. So completes life cycle of application development supported with that tool chain. Uh, yeah, fast application development, serverless computing. So a new application is just created with one click. There's a proven tool chain for the complete stack. Uh, Technology independent if you're switching from on-prem to the cloud, if you're switching between databases in the back, uh, or if you're switching front-end technologies, your shop is not anymore in the web, it's just on Alexa, because people are buying uh, things there now, uh, then you're independent there. And uh, the main point why people are buying it in the enterprise is actually, is, I think, governance, because they have standardization on the API level, the APIs are generated, uh, in a, in a very efficient way, and they don't have to have uh, big processes to uh, keep APIs standardized. Uh, it's just within the tool, and uh, there are central concepts for logging, audits, operations, and so on. So now you know what blockchain is, what backend as a service is, uh, what our use case is, and now we want to bring things together. Here are our use case again, all those different people, uh, somehow working on that blockchain, um, but the problem is they, we have seen that uh, we need to have also applications there. And that is one of my the things I would like to post here. If you're a blockchain, normally you not only have the old systems where you're putting data in, you very, very often have also new applications, new website, new apps, new skills, new chatbots, new whatever you name it, um, and that needs to be connected to that blockchain. And um, the question is how you do that and um, how you also, uh, one, one thing you also normally want to do is connect that data from the blockchain to data of your enterprise that, uh, that are in other systems, the gray boxes uh, uh, in there, that, uh, that you want to connect uh, that data. And the next thing is that IT already struggles to deliver the, the apps and websites that the business uh, wants to have in the fast and efficient way. So the idea is uh, to bring uh, backend as a service and uh, blockchain together, have a node on the uh, scene as a new enterprise system, a new backend system, backend as a service in front of it, and uh, being very fast in creating new applications and having also the possibility to integrate with other backend systems, and yeah, I think that's it.